All right, so welcome back students. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here for you is I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, quick unit two exam review. Um, try to highlight some of the important things that you should just pay attention to. Keep in mind that this is not the uh, final, this is what's gonna be on the exam. This is just a supplementary tool to help you essentially get a, uh, a quick understanding of what some of the major topics that, that will be showing up on the exam. So let's go ahead and begin with uh, section 2.1. And so in the first section in 2.1, uh, what we dealt with here were the uh, types of chemical bonds. Okay. And so the main thing that we need to figure out here was uh, to pay attention to a couple of items. And so those items include the uh, bonding that occurs, these interactions between an atom. So if I had, for example, atom one and I had an atom two, these interactions occurring between the atoms, they're going to occur uh, when there is an overlap of uh, valence electrons. That's the main thing that's occurring here. And so uh, we're gonna get some kind of interaction here at that valence electron. And I'll kind of put a couple of electrons here just for, for show. And so depending on which atom it is, you're gonna have obviously more than one, but if we're just looking at the one valence electron here, hypothetically, maybe this is hydrogen, uh, essentially you would wanna make sure that you understand that these two electrons then are gonna form a interaction. And so one of the better things that I should do is probably uh, make sure that I can move this uh, one electron a little bit further down. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And so let's go ahead and draw those in one more time here. I'll put them right here at the end of the uh, of the dots that I wrote down. So you've got an interaction going on here. So one of the main things that you'll need to figure out is uh, what kind of interaction. And there's generally two types of interactions that we're worried about here. Uh, we need to know whether the bond is either going to be an ionic bond or whether it's going to be a covalent bond. Okay. So these are the two uh, important ones that you'll need to be worried about. And ultimately what it comes down to is essentially is going to be whether are those electrons going to be shared or whether those electrons are going to be uh, essentially taken by one uh, atom or the other. If you've got an ionic situation going on here, uh, one atom is going to take the electrons. And then in the covalent side of things, I'll put this in a slightly different color here, the electrons are essentially going to be shared. So electrons are shared between the two. Now, if you think about this carefully, uh, what does it really mean for each one in terms of whether your one atom takes or whether the electrons are being shared between two atoms? Ultimately, that comes down to the idea that there's gonna be a electronegativity difference. And so when one atom takes the electrons here, we have one atom that essentially is gonna have a very high electronegativity compared to the other. So the electronegativity difference here is very high for the ionic. And typically that magic number that one uses as a reference point is approximately 1.7. It could be a little bit higher, but generally about 1.7. And so what does that mean? So we usually want to take into the account the uh, electronegativity of the first atom and compare it to the second. And so let's just kind of look at some numbers here very briefly. Uh, take a couple of examples. We said hydrogen here was the example for this one here. And so let's say that this is a hydrogen, this is a hydrogen. The electronegativity for a hydrogen atom essentially is going to be 2.2. And if we do the same electronegativity over here for the other hydrogen atom, when we say the difference, we're going to take these two numbers here and we're essentially going to subtract them. So that'd be 2.2 minus a 2.2, and the difference here is zero difference. So it's this number here at the bottom, this electronegativity value, that essentially tells us that neither atom is gonna have the, the edge over the other atom. And so the electron here is not gonna be one by one electron or another. So in this particular case, uh, you're gonna get a situation where the electrons are gonna be shared between the electrons because the difference is not that high. Now, in contrast, to kind of finish the thought that I was started off with in terms of talking about ionic compounds or the ionic bonds, let's say that these atoms are not hydrogen and hydrogen together. What if we replace one of these, say, with uh, chlorine? What if this other one here was chlorine? And so what I'll do here, let me just change the numbers a little bit here. Uh, let me erase all of this and then we'll do the math one more time. So essentially what we're seeing here, if I say the second atom here is a uh, chlorine atom, let's change this to red. And so then here, the electronegativity value for chlorine 
is actually a little bit higher. I think that number is about 3.4. Let me just check that number and verify it really quick. So that number is actually 3.16. And so the difference here we're going to take is going to take, we'll probably start with the higher number, subtract the lower number. And so in this particular case here, let's just go ahead and do that math here. We're going to take the 3.16. We're going to subtract from that 2.2. And when you do the math here, you'll get the following answer here. You should get here a six. Here, we're gonna take a two there. This should be a 9.0 there. So the difference between a hydrogen atom and a chlorine atom in terms of its electronegativity difference is 0.96. And so here, uh, we see a little bit of a, a higher difference between the two, but it's still not quite uh, at that magic number of 1.7. So we're a little bit closer to ionic, but we're still a ways off. This particular arrangement here, because it is higher than the zero, this one here will start to take on some polar character, which means you're gonna have some polarity. One of the sides of the molecule is gonna be positively charged, the other one is gonna be negatively charged. But still the electrons are not gonna be taken by one atom or the other. Although in this particular case, because the number is 0.96, one of those electrons is gonna be actually a little bit closer to the chlorine atom. And so what we start to see here in both of these is we're gonna to start to see that the hydrogen will have a delta positive charge, the negative for the chlorine here will have a delta negative. And so this here is essentially the beginnings of polarity. Even though this here is going to be a covalent bond still between hydrogen and chlorine. What will actually get us into the ionic, and this is something that is gonna be a very quick, easy tip for you, is whenever you see metals combining. And so one of the easiest things to do here, let's replace the hydrogen atom. And so I'll go ahead and do that. Let's get this hydrogen out of the way. Here, we'll change the polarity here because it's gonna change overall. We'll change the values, and so let me erase some of these. We'll leave the values for chlorine, but here for the polarity, if I say, for example, uh, you've got a magnesium atom for, as, as the atom that we're gonna go with. Here we got a magnesium, and so this magnesium atom is gonna have a electronegativity value of 1.31. And so here now, when we do the difference again, this would be 3.16 and then we're gonna subtract here the 1.31. So that would give us a five. We're gonna carry a two here. This will give us an 8.1. Uh, so here now you can see that we actually do have a crossing of this 1.7 threshold. So this here between a magnesium atom, go to put the magnesium up top. Uh, you're gonna need two chlorines, obviously, because magnesium has a valence electron on either side, but if we only focus on the one electron to the right here, uh, let's draw the other one just for reference. If we focus only on this bond over here, uh, in between the atoms here to the right, you're gonna see that this particular bond is actually gonna ha have an ionic bond uh, uh, status because the electron here from the magnesium is going to be technically lost, and that electron will be over here on the uh, chlorine side of things. And so this is largely what the section 2.1 was all about. The other item that you need to know about here is, is briefly focus on interactions. And so let me go ahead and put another uh, screen here, or let me, better yet, let me just go ahead and move things aside. So let me go ahead and pause this. I'll clear the screen and we'll keep going. All right, so let's go ahead and move all of this over. We're just gonna kind of move things here. Uh, let's see here, how do I do this? Let's put that there. Get all of these items here. We might use them here in a little bit, so just move off to the side. And so the main idea here is that if we go through and look at these interactions uh, in terms of the way it should be overall, the way we should look at them, uh, you need to make sure that you are very familiar with the general types of interactions we discussed in class. And so those interactions there are essentially gonna be the interactions with the positive and the negative charges. Okay, now these interactions here are occurring between the atoms, so we have a positive interaction uh, attracting a negative charge, and then on the flip side of that, the opposite would be true, the negative attracts the positive, and then you've got uh, on the other side, though, if you have a positive charge, this is going to repel. 
a positive charge. And then on the negative side things, a negative charge will repel a negative charge. And so that's very important because when you start to see this and if you start to look at this in terms of uh, structures that you need to be aware of, these are going to be the solid structures or whole structures uh, that you need to be looking at. The, the arrangement that we start to see here with the ionic compounds in particular is we're going to see here, and I'm going to draw, zoom in on this here. We're going to see an arrangement where you're going to start to get positive atoms or ions interacting in an alternating pattern with the uh, positive charges. And so let me I kind of wrote that to a negative charge there, and then you'll have an alternating positive charge, and then that'll have a negative charge alternating. And this is going to be true uh, for all kinds of items here. And so when you do that, you're going to get an alternating piece here overall. And it'll repeat itself uh, over and over again. And so the idea is that if you can come in here and repeat it, you're going to be able to see that this alternating charge, we're going to have to move things around a little here. And just because this right here, a typical question would be if this is a right drawing, for example. And so ideally here, when you look at that, you're going to see that between the two positive here and the positive here, this is actually going to be a repulsive force, just like the negative here is going to repel the negative force. So that's not going to be ideal. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to make sure that you essentially alternate these so that they're a little bit alternated there and alternate it here. You can come in here, let me arrange it like this instead. And so what you want to do is make sure that when you draw these in terms of uh, structures, you consider the fact that you need to alternate the, the different atoms or the different ions in this particular case so that you have the maximum number of attractions and you're minimizing the repulsions that occur. Now, obviously, I've drawn this in two dimensionals, but you should consider this also as a lattice. And so the lattice would occur um, in, in three dimensional space. Now, uh, I'll attempt it here, but you've seen this in class already. Let me draw this a little bit. So if I were to go in here and start drawing this in terms of the... Uh, the lattice, let's just draw the framework here. Uh, if I got a framework here, let's see that framework. Oh, okay, we've got a pencil. So let's say I got the framework here, kind of like this. And in here, uh, we've got the uh, cube structure overall. And so, you know, you can kind of break this up into various sections. And so that's what I'll do here just for, for reference. You could put here at the uh, center here, you could put a positive charge here. You could put a negative charge there, positive there. And then up here on the on the, the, the dimensionality over here on the back side, you can have a negative charge and a positive and a negative. So they're going to be alternating. Okay. And so here you can see that as we go through and add dimensionality to this, you're going to see that in three dimensional spaces here, the, uh, the charges are alternating overall. And so um, here we'll just give a little bit of... Um, shading here to kind of show the three-dimensional, but you, you kind of get the idea. And you want to make sure that you get this in three-dimensional space so that uh, these charges then will be providing interlocking or interlocking uh, attraction between the negative and the positive in this particular uh, cross uh, interaction, just like there's going to be interaction between this positive charge and that negative charge there in this kind of cross interaction. And as the solid grows, obviously the more interactions you're going to have. Having this alternating pattern is what actually gives the uh, the ionic solid that strong strength, even though the ionic solid actually is quite brittle overall. Okay. So the main thing to take away from this is just remember that the type of bond is extremely important and this really uh, kind of falls into this idea that uh, you need to be able to calculate the uh, ionic, uh, whether the bond is ionic or whether the bond is covalent. And it really, it really comes down to, to that uh, electronegativity difference. If you can actually see all of that done, uh, you can see that a lot of these uh, bonds can easily be identified here if you can just kind of look at the, the, the bonding here. Now, I will finish the thought here since I'm seeing the, uh, the items here. I'm going to go ahead and kind of look at this section here and zoom in a little bit and bring this over. Because uh, I think I do need to clarify here that before I leave you um, that when we look at the covalent bonds here, I should clarify the covalent bonds here have two types, polar covalent and um, non-polar covalent. And so if you're going to be of the polar kind, po polar C, uh, here you're going to see that your electronegativity difference, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write it like this. The electronegativity difference here is going to be greater uh, than uh, or equal to 0 0.3, but it's also going to be less than uh, 1.7.
And to distinguish this from the nonpolar covalent, so I'll put nonpolar covalent. Here, these are going to be the bonds that essentially are going to be less than 0 0.3. So if you have these three numbers here, 1.7 for the ionic, that's 1.7 and above, uh, and then below that number you get into covalent, and then at the higher end of that spectrum, above 0.3 is where you have the uh, polar covalent. So those are the things to remember here uh, for this section of the exam. So I'm going to go ahead and move on now to the uh, second uh, section here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of break this video up so you're going to see a second video here for section 2.2.